Good Moed, we're coming to the day of Simchas Torah, the climax of Tishrei, the highest point of Tishrei, and the Rebbe speaks in the Mimer that the Rebbe spoke in Tavshin Lamedches after having a heart attack. The Rebbe said that we find that the day of Simchas Torah attracts even those Jews that the whole year don't come to Shul, don't feel connected, they come to dance with the Torah. Actually, they say that in Russia, the day of the year that Jews, you know, the one day of the year that the Jews would come to Shul, no matter what, at least many Jews that wouldn't come during the year would come to Shul, be Simchas Teira. You know, we're usually hearing about Yom Kippur, but I think in Russia it was actually the day of Simchas Teira that was the day that was celebrated by every by many many Jews. So what attracts a, what attracts a Jew on Simchas Teira? The Teira is covered with dancing with the Jew. And obviously the point is that in Simchas Torah is when the essential connection of a Jew and the Torah and the Eibishter are revealed. You're not dancing with the Torah as you're learning Torah, you're dancing with the essence of the Torah, the way the Torah is covered over with a mantle. With a mantle. And this is revealing the essence of a Jew's connection with Hashem. And that is, the Rebbe explains that everything that takes place in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur gets revealed on Sukkot and Shmini Atzeres and Simchas Torah. The highest point of the Aseres Yimei Tshuva from Rosh Hashanah until Yom Kippur is obviously the prayer of Ne'ilah, the end of Yom Kippur. The, the last prayer is called Ne'ilah. Why is it called Ne'ilah? Ne'ilah means that the gates are being locked. So simply it sounds like, you know, that the gates of heaven are soon going to be locked. It's time to to, chaparain, to to try to grab in the last few moments to pray. But the Rebbe said a very deep point that at this point we lock all the doors and it's just the Eibishet and Yidin are alone together. All the doors are locked in the sense no one else is allowed in. It's just the Eibishet and Yidin. This is revealed on Yom Kippur in a more serious way when we're fasting, when we're refraining from involvement in eating and drinking. However, in Simchas Torah, this essential relationship that is just the Eibishet and Yidin alone gets revealed in a way of unlimited joy. The Zayar says that when Yosef revealed himself to his brothers, he didn't want anyone to be in the room. So the Zayar says that this is the day of Shemini Atzeres, that the Eibishter reveals himself to the Yidin, so to say, shows his love and affection to the Jewish people, and no one else, no nations, no, no spiritual entities, so to say, are allowed, and it's just the joy of the Eibishter and the Jewish people alone. So the day of Simchas Teirah is the highest point of Tishrei where we celebrate the unity that we have with the Ebesha, which is expressed through dancing with the Teirah. There's actually an interesting story in Hakafis in the year, Tav Shalom Vav, 1975, there was a judge from Israel, Chaim Cohen, who in his youth learned in the yeshiva, and later on, for various reasons, he went far away from Yiddishkeit, and he had, was very strong in the anti-religious you know, left sector of Israel at that point, and he came as, you know, the Israeli consul will come to the Rebbe for our coffee in Simchas Seira, and he came to the Rebbe during that time, and the Rebbe gave him a Sefer Teira for the, they, they were Mechavad, and they honored him carrying a Sefer Teira for the Hakafis. And they actually gave him a very heavy Sefer Teira, and there's different versions exactly what the Rebbe said, but the Rebbe made a comment that if a Jew wants to accept upon himself the yoke of Teira, so you should let him have it. And he, he took the, the heavy Sefer Teira and he danced, and the Rebbe danced for a very long time, that Akaf, and he danced very strongly with the Rebbe. They say that although officially, you know, he still, you know, didn't officially say anything afterwards, but they say that that was made a tremendous change in his life, in the sense that from that point onwards, he had no, he, his, his, his animosity, his hatred to religious Judaism stopped. And he told us that he didn't find peace for the rest of his life, because he still officially, we you know, his official standing was with the Israeli left, and he couldn't just, you know, change his skin publicly, you know, in one day. But he never felt comfortable anymore being in that position from his encounter, from his dancing with the Rebbe on, on, on HaKafis by Simchas Teira. They even say that there was another individual who knew this judge, Chaim Kohn, who was later once invited to come to the Rebbe, and he said, I don't want to come. I can't come because I'm afraid the rest of my life I'll be going through the same, uh, you know, <laughs> suffering this with my guilty conscience, you know, I, I will realize the beauty, the connection of Yid with the Eibishter, and how, you know, it will be difficult for me to come to terms with it in my day-to-day -day life. But this is what Shmini Atzeres and Simcha said is when a Jew reveals his essential connection with Hashem, he, ex he expresses it through unlimited joy. 
We know that Chassidus explains that the Yom Tovim from Rosh Hashanah until Simchas Torah are really one leads to the next. You know, if you look simply, it's, it's, there's many Yom Tovim, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemini Yatzer, Simchas Torah. They might not seem very related, but Chassidus explains that it's one continuation. Rosh Hashanah, a Jew, turns to the Eibush, that he blows the Shefer, he, so to say, taps into the essence of the Eibush, he asks the Eibush, I want it to be my king, I want to be connected with you. That is done in a very general, deep, essential way, and that needs to be expressed, that needs to be developed. So comes the ten days of Tshuva, where a Jew works on developing this connection, this deep felt connection with Eibush, throughout his actions, through returning to the Eibush, in a very, you know, deep way. And the highlight of that, where this comes to its full climax, is on Yom Kippur. That's the point when a Jew gets fully connected with the Eibushter, particularly by Nila, like I mentioned before. That connection, the Eibushter, that was, that was, so to say, opened up in Rosh Hashanah, becomes manifested in the most revealed way. But nevertheless, it's revealed only within the heart, within the soul of a Jew. It's not revealed yet within the world. The person is particularly in Yom Kippur, where we, so to say, we're running away from the world, we're not eating, we're not drinking, that connection is expressed in Oifim Pnimi, in a very inner way, in a way of Neshama. It's not yet expressed in an open way, physically. Then comes Sukkot. Sukkot is a time of rejoicing. Joy is when something is revealed and expressed, and as Chassidah says, that the connection to the Ebesheh that we express in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur now is able to come out in the open, and open in our physical life, and open to all the nations of the world as well. So we eat in the sukkah, we shake the lul of an asterisk. Eating in the sukkah means that everything, your physical actions, you're eating, you're drinking, and even though we don't sleep in the sukkah, but the conceptual halacha, the mitzvah of sukkah, is even to sleep in the sukkah. Everything you do, you're not doing anything different than how you would do your regular day-to-day life. The only thing is your whole gashmis, your all your physical endeavors are surrounded with the sukkah. You're done, it's done in the holiness of connection to the Eibishtah. And this is the idea of Sukkot, where you're taking that connection that was established with Shana Yom Kippur, and you're celebrating it, you're enjoying it, you're expressing it to the extent that it penetrates your eating, your drinking, your physical activities as well. And this is also, we know, in the Lulav and the Asterix, so this explains, you bring down the, 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 the revelation of Sukkot into your heart, into your intellect, your emotions, that you penetrate, you reveal the aspects of your soul as well. Shmini Yatzeres and Simcha Yatzeres, what Chassidus calls is the Klita, when things get absorbed. Sukkah is more of a temporary dwelling. Shmini Yatzeres, we go back, Simcha Yatzeres particularly, we come back into the house. We take all the experiences of, 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 of our connection to the Eibishter, starting from Rosh Hashanah and Kippur and Sukkah, so now it becomes internalized and crystallized and that it should last with, with us through the year. How is this done? Through dancing with the Teira. Now Sukkah and Shmini Yatzad HaSim Chaser, a Jew expresses a connection to the Eibush in the most unlimited way, and the way that you have, as Reb explained, the highest of the high, the lowest of the low, the, the most deepest connection to the Eibush being expressed in sim- simple dancing, dancing with our feet. And this is why we celebrate what the Pesukim of Atah HaReisa, where we start of Atah HaReisa Ladas, Ke Hashem Elokim Enoid Mulvade, we're celebrating Enoid Mulvade, that nothing exists besides the Eibush. This is the climax of Tishrei. This recognition that a Jew lives with the Eibishter in a way, this is what Rosh Hashanah and Kippur and Sukkot, everything is leading to, that you should go from now on into the world, and you should live your life in a way of Enid Mulvadi, of complete connection to the Eibishter, recognizing that there's nothing but the Eibishter, Bereshis, Baro, Lekimas, Hashemayim, Vesoretz, as we start reading on Simcha Seder, how understanding how the whole world is run by the Eibishter, everything is done by the Eibishter, and he runs the world, and all our activities are permeated with that, with that feeling, that understanding. So this is the, the, the message of Simcha Seder, why, why it's so important, and the koyach that it gives a year to take, to internalize everything that he experience, experiences during Rosh Hashanah and Kippur and Sukkot, and to put it, bring it down, the poel mamash, he should bring it down physically in the way of Enid Mulvada. And the Rebbe says, interesting thing actually, that on, on Simcha Seder particularly, the unity of the Jewish people is not expressed, in spiritual terms. Now we know sukkahs is unity. We all sit in the same sukkah. We take the four types, the Lulav and the Esrik, and the Dasm and the which represent different types of Jews, and bringing them together. But at the end of the day, is this is... However, at the end of the day, this unity is expressed in spiritual matters. The accomplishment of Simcha said is that the unity of the Jewish people is expressed poshut physically begashmi. We're all dancing together with our physical feet, the bottom of our feet, the lowest part of our body, symbolizing that we unite with another Jew, physically helping in physical matters. 
we combine the highest connection of the Eibishter and Yidin that comes from the essence of the Neshama down to the most lowest physical expression of Maisev Apoel, of physical action. So this is another lesson we take with, from Simcha Seyre, the idea of Achtos Apoel Mamish, not just, you know, emotionally and, and the great feeling, but it should express itself in physical action throughout the year. As a Sicha uh, the Rebbe spoke, in Tavshin Mandalad, 1983, which is a little bit, I think, apropos for this year, the Rebbe spoke then that usually by the Rebbeim, the, the joy of Simcha Seyda was greater than Shmini Atzeres. And for this reason, the day of Shmini, the joy of Hakafis and Shmini Atzeres was, compared to Simcha Seyda, at least more limited, more serious, you might even call it, it was more limited in time and the expression of joy. However, Simchas Taira was, so to say, was without any limitations. And the Rebbe spoke that that year, by Shmini Atzeres, by night, the joy that the Rebbe already showed by Yaakovus was unbounded, was unlimited, similar to the joy of Simchas Taira. And the Rebbe explained that the reason why he did this was because the world was shaking. The Rebbe spoke then about the two superpowers, Malchis, Muzgari, Zubazu, you had Russia and, and, and America, and other things going on in the world, the Rebbe says that we have no other aid, so we have no other solution right, right now. We tried already everything. We need to break the boundaries, the barriers of Golos with Simcha. So the Rebbe says, fine, that is true. We, we, we understand the need for Simcha due to the world situation. But why couldn't we wait until Simcha Seder? Why did we already have to start Shmini Atzeres, which is the night that the Rebbe were a little bit more reserved in their joy. Why did we have to wait? Why did we have to start the Simcha and Shmini Atzeres? So the Rebbe brought, obviously, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is what we call Rebbe Shem Yon, and the Rebbe has his spiritual accomplishments, but the Rebbe gave us a little insight into what was going on. The Rebbe quoted the story that happened with the Rebbe during the War of Napoleon. We know there was a big debate amongst the Tzadikim at the time if Napoleon should win or the Tsar Alexander should win. Atreb was in favor of the Tsar Alexander of Russia winning. Other Sadikim were in favor of Napoleon winning. And it was decided in the heavenly court that when it comes Rosh Hashanah, Tafka Fayin Gimel, the last Rosh Hashanah of Atreb's life, the one who would blow Shafer first, that would be the one that in heaven he would be able to accomplish that whoever should win, whether it should be Napoleon or, or, or Tsar Alexander. And uh, the way the story goes is that the other tzaddik and the other students of the Magad who were in favor of Napoleon winning, he got up very early, right at the second he was allowed to start davening Shachris. They started davening, they quickly went through Shachris and Kriyas HaToyra, and he's about to blow the shaif, and he says, Oy, the Litvak at Eiskechap, the Atreb, which was known as the Litvak, he came from Lithuania, he already, you know, he chapped it, he, he grabbed it before me. What happened? Al Rebbe, when it came to time that you could a blow shefer, Al Rebbe didn't daven shachris and do kriyas atayr. He didn't do the ordinary thing. He jumped the gun. He jumped the order. He started right away. The first right when you allowed to blow shefer, he blew shefer. Halachically, allowed to blow shefer before davening. So Al Rebbe therefore managed to be victorious in this spiritual debate. What was going on? So the Rebbe said similarly. The lesson for us is. I mean, obviously the Rebbe knew what was going on, and he didn't exactly explain what, what was going on in the heavenly court, but sometimes you have to grab right away. Don't wait until Shmini Atzeres, until Simcha Seder, but already experienced the Jew in Shmini Atzeres. And the Rebbe said the lesson is when things go on into the world, the Jew has to know, the Rebbe emphasized, the Jew shouldn't spend his time checking the news, you know, he's not going to help the world situation by debating what's going on this way or that way, a Jew is able to change the world by a Jew is able to change the world by doing Teira mitzvahs. But the fact that Bashkach Pratis he finds out about things that's going on on the world is to tell him that he should be aware that whatever he does in serving the Ebishad has a direct effect in the world at large. And if he sees there's things in the world that need a tikkun, a correction, the way he's going to accomplish the tikkun, the correction is by increasing in Torah mitzvahs, and, you know, so that was the message that the Rebbe spoke about that year. What exactly was going on in heaven in that year, I do not know, I'm not going to even guess. 
But uh, it's definitely for the situation that we're in right now, we understand that it's very apropos, the importance of joy, although unfortunately, according to Gala's plan, the, uh, the ability for us to celebrate the way we would want to is limited. But nevertheless, Simcha said, there's nothing besides Debeshez. This saying goes, there was once a, a Jew, a Chassidah Shiyit, that was walking alone at night, and someone stops him, somebody that wasn't, you know, a chassid, and he stops him, and he says, you know, a guy like you, you shouldn't be walking alone. So he said, Ayidus came on Ishtalein, a Jew is never alone. The guy thinks for a second, says, yeah, you're right. He says, Yetzir Hara always goes with, it, with you, but with a person. You know, so there's always two ways of looking at a person. A person is alone. What is he alone with? Is he alone with his sad feelings, with his Yetzir Hara, with his depression? Or he's alone with Ebesha. The Ebesha is always with him. So a person, the Jew, has the power to transcend time and space, to transcend whether he's alone, he's quarantined or not, and he's able to celebrate with Enid Mulvad, with Ebeshit himself. That's what Simcha Seyda is anyway. So, so this is uh, through Simcha Peyre's God, the Simcha breaks boundaries, and uh, as the Rebbe said, the shaking, and by dancing, the world is shaking, able to transform the world, that everything should should be turned around into a, in, 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 in a way of simcha, in a way of joy, and we should have the coming of Mashiach right now. Just finish. want to finish up with one thought. We know that the Rebbeim always emphasized that during Tishrei, there's many Yom and Tevim, there's a lot of spiritual baggage and, and, and spiritual experiences that we have, but in order to make it relevant in our day-to-day -day life, it's important to make some type of achlot, or some type of resolution, with which we're able to carry the inspiration of Tishrei throughout the year. So, just a, a basic thought that I think is, is, is uh, always important, particularly this year, we know that because of the bilbul, we go, everyone is going through crazy times, and we, everyone appreciated in some way or another the days of Yom Tov, that they were able to forget about the news, weren't able to check the news for a few days during Yom Tov, and were able to have a little bit of peace of mind that was going on, forget about what's going on in the world and spend a few minutes dancing, whichever way you're able to, or davening, speaking to the Ebeshter. So when it comes the rest of the year, we should make a achlata, we should dedicate at least a few minutes a day. I mean, she always, you know, we should stay focused, take Tishrei with us during the year, a few minutes a day, we're always supposed to learn and daven, but we should try to keep the focus and the, you know, the, 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 dedication and, and so to say blocking out what's going on at least for some time a day when we learn and we dive and we should be able to appreciate those few moments we're able to rise above all the turbulent waters that are going on and to dedicate ourselves at that time which when we dive and we should really mean it and not worry about uh, who's texting us or what uh, what's going on with the elections or with, uh, with, with COVID updates and things like that and when we learn Taita, we should be dedicated to that. And Abish is all healthy, that we should merit to see the ultimate joy, the ultimate Sumchas Taita, the joy of the Taita being celebrated in the third day Samikdash with Mashiach said, Kena, take it from Yad Mamash.